Good morning, everybody. Welcome to 1019 Bible Study, our Walking with Jesus study. I, honestly, I think we're probably getting near the end. Uh, I'm actually running out of pictures to show you uh, of different locations that we went to. But also, more importantly, uh, you know, we're starting to now get back to normal. Um, we're going on today's what? Almost three, three weeks. Yeah, about three weeks, three, four weeks that we've been in person worship for whether it's youth group or or today, Sunday morning worship. Um, and as we continue to move into the summer, uh, you know, we're going to start opening up more and more. And, and I know that the, the president of the United States is really trying to encourage churches to open back up. And um, I know that certain governors all over the country are really wanting us to start opening back up. You know, restaurants, gyms, all these things are starting to open back up. So I think that maybe within the next two or three weeks, we actually might be able to meet in person for Bible study again. Uh, so I'm really excited for that. And I hope that you have felt connected to God uh, through this pandemic, but more importantly, uh, that you're able to start to connect uh, what you read in scripture uh, with what you're seeing on the screen and and you're now starting to be able to paint images in your mind of the locations that you read uh, so yeah i i've enjoyed this study it's been a lot of fun uh being able to go back to where we were a few months ago and um, take a trip down memory lane and to keep this stuff fresh in my mind and in my spirit it's it's been a very enjoyable experience for me and i hope that you have enjoyed this as well um, a couple quick housekeeping uh, items to take care of before we jump right into our study for today. Uh, you know, we're still meeting in person, so if, if your parents feel uh, comfortable in allowing you to come back to youth group, we would love to have you this Wednesday. Uh, we'll meet in Holy Ground at 6 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be 6 to 7.30, just like uh, it would be if it was a normal Wednesday. Uh, the only difference is, you know, we're still unable to effectively provide food uh, we just can't cook it and prepare it in the way that the government that the state that doctors health physicians all these different people uh, recommend that we prepare it safely um, so you know please eat before you show up to youth group um, but we're having a lot of fun like this past Wednesday oh my nose is really itchy um, this past Wednesday when we had youth group, I came up with this really, really cool social distancing game uh, where we had these uh, water guns. It's those long sword-like water guns and you pump them and pshaw, shoot water and, and um, we used those as kind of like swords or bats and you had to uh, hit the balloon from one side of the room to the other and you had to hit it into a trash can. It was a lot of fun. The, everybody loved it. Um, so I'm going to keep trying to come up with social distancing games uh, that keep us engaged and keep us having fun. Uh, the band is working really hard to put together worship. So anyway, it's it's awesome. Um, but please eat before you show up, you know, just because we can't prepare food just yet. Um, I want to say, I want to believe that maybe by mid-June, we'll be able to get a team together who will prepare dinner for us. And then we'll be able to start like at 5 or 530 and then we can have dinner together as a family and as a community of believers and then jump right into to worship just like we always do when we have regular Wednesday night. And the very last thing is uh, due to just the uncertainty of everything. Um, I know that Choye is opening back up um, and I know that some other camps are starting to open back up. You know, nice, as I said, restaurants and gyms and other things are opening back up. Um, I have made some suggestions about trips and stuff, and I've gotten a lot of negative feedback from people and from parents and some concerns regarding it. So, you know, we've decided we're going to keep doing Wednesday night every single Wednesday night, unless it's a holiday like 4th of July or something. Um, we're going to keep doing Wednesday night worship throughout the entire summer. Um, we're not going to we're not going to stop. It's not going to be every other week. It's not going to be twice a month or something. It's going to be every Wednesday night. Um, still same time, 6, 730 come on out. Uh, so even though school technically ended for Livingston last week, you know, and it's going to end for Alaska here in the next week or so, uh, and summer vacation starting, we're still still going. Um, so please join us this summer for Wednesday night youth group from 6 to 730. I said that multiple times because I really want to make sure you guys know what time uh, we're meeting. Uh, so yeah, 
With all that said, let's jump right into our study for today, Walking with Jesus. As some of you may have seen uh, on various different social media platforms, you know, I, over the past couple of months, I have posted pictures and posted videos from the trip. And there is one time in particular for me as the youth pastor that just really stood out, that just has meant the world to me outside of finding my, my special tree. And that's a whole nother video and a whole nother topic um, is that we went to the River Jordan. Um, and if you're not familiar with that river, that's the river that John the Baptist was doing his ministry where he was pe uh, preaching, repent, um, you know, the, the kingdom of God is coming and you need to get, get right, you need to get baptized, you need to get washed clean. Um, and then Jesus comes up to him and says, you know, I want to be baptized, uh, which we're actually going to read that here in a second. For me as a youth pastor, we got to visit this this uh, this river. And at first, when we were uh, driving up, you know, I was I was talking to all the students and adult volunteers. Uh, you know, do you want to reaffirm your baptism? Because uh, you know, I'm not ordained, so I can't actually baptize anybody. Uh, and initially, some people were like yes, and they're like, well, no, and then we're like, well, yeah, I would like to, but I'm the only one, so it's kind of awkward. I don't know if I want to do it, and and then we show up. And we pull up to the facility that they have for uh, the River Jordan. And all of a sudden, all five of the college students that I took, um, Sam Jackson, Tori Bronner, Caleb Evans, Morgan Brown, and Ty Burks, they all came up to me and said, we want you to reaffirm our baptisms. Um, we want to do this. Uh, we talked about it as a group and we feel that it's important to us as as believers and so for me and, and I'm gonna try not to get choked up here because it's hugely impactful for me as a, as a youth pastor but uh, we got to go to the River Jordan where Jesus was baptized and I got to help these college kids reconnect to Jesus that they got to go back and remember that moment that they chose to be his disciples when they chose baptism and when they chose to repent of their sins and be people who who Jesus wants them to be, to put aside their their past and to move forward as, as a new creation. And so being a part of that was deeply impactful for me. Um, and it was also deeply impactful for, for the college kids. And, and what was really cool is that also had an impact on all the high schoolers who came and they got to see these kids that they grew up looking up to and, and, and wanting to be like and, and respecting. And so it had an impact on, on the whole team. Um, but yeah, it was, it was just an awesome, awesome experience where Jesus really showed up. So what I need you to do is I need you to uh, grab your Bible for me and I want you to open up to the Gospel of Matthew. Now this story is found in multiple uh, multiple gospels so if you want to read a different gospel at a later date or after the bible study you can uh, but we're going to read from matthew chapter 3. Uh, now i'm going to read quite a bit to you because i want to read uh, everything that kind of led up to jesus baptism which is talking about john and then i actually want to read about jesus's specific baptism so we're going to read matthew chapter 3 verses 1 all the way down through uh, verse 17, basically the entire of chapter 3. So listen to God's word. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who, has spoken, who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. 
Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with, with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. O gracious and loving Father, Abba Father, Daddy, we cry out to you now seeking your love. In this time of tribulation, in this time of, of isolation, we just pray for your comfort. We pray that through it all that your, your name and that your works are made known through our lives. That as we learn about you, we can draw closer to you and be better representatives of your kingdom to the world. Because God, this world needs you. We need you. We are so honored and grateful for the reading of your word. And we just spend a second to surrender our prayer concerns to you right now so that we can be focused on this video and focused on you and not be distracted by our problems. So let's lift them up right now. Take them from us, Father. Thank you, God. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's jump right over to our pictures. Now, I will forewarn you, um, a lot of pictures were taken here uh, of the river of the different people, the the students getting bapt or getting getting their baptisms reaffirmed. Um, so I may skip through a lot. It may go fast, um, and I'll stop and kind of talk about different ones. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right over to it. Yeah, that's the one I want. I'll just cut that other section out when I go into post. So this is a shot of the River Jordan. This right here is the river. Um, and let me tell you, first off, this is a deep river. Um, it, when you get past like right over here, it like just drops off. It is super, super, super deep. Now, when we went in March, uh, you would expect, since it's the Middle East, and everyone always thinks the Middle, the Middle East is desert because we think of like Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, but actually, most of the Middle East is lush, lush vegetation. It's the reason why God called it the Promised Land and the reason why he pulled his, his chosen people out of Egypt back to the Promised Land um, where it's milk and honey. Uh, so the picture you see here, this is, you know, back in March, everything's green and lush, but the water's really cold. Uh, now, I don't think it's always cold, but it was cold then because we were still in the middle of winter for Israel. And, and at night, some of the nights, it was actually getting down into like the low 50s, high 40s. Uh, so when we, when we first stepped into the water, we hadn't even uh, gotten past ankle deep. And it, I mean, we were we were already shaking, it was so cold. Man, my nose is just so itchy. But, as I have shared over the past few weeks, we, most of the sites, we only assume that this is within the proximity and vicinity of where we read in scripture. We have absolutely no idea where these things took place. And, and more importantly, um, 
as time has gone on, you know, things have changed and and locations have changed, you know, hills have eroded and and grasslands have been turned into farmland and so it's it's really hard to pinpoint exactly where it was. But based on tradition and there's actually a couple other spots up and down the Jordan River that they claim is the spot where John baptized people that we just read here in the Gospel of Matthew. Uh but this company believes that up and down this bank, uh, this is the furthest end pool. Right over here is a, a road. Uh, so you, you go up here probably another 50, 60 yards that way, and you'll see a, a road. There's an overpass and stuff. Uh, but <clears throat> this is the furthest pool of the property that this company owned. And they had like, I think it was like eight separate pools that you could get um, baptized in and... Uh, and I feel a sneeze coming on, so if I sneeze, I apologize. But they claim this is where John did all of his baptizing, uh, where all these people came to hear his message and to uh, come and want to repent of their sins and to get ready for the coming of, of God's kingdom and the coming of the end of the world and the coming of judgment. Uh, but I, I want to stress something. As you can clearly see in, in what I read in Scripture when we we're reading about John, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they were the religious elite. They were the ones who basically dictated how Israel was going to live. They were the shakers and the movers. And John is sitting here yelling at them. Um, he is condemning them. He is telling them that they're evil and they're wrong and they're wicked. Uh, and you can imagine what that would do. I mean, he is a homeless guy. He is not really uh, of any importance. His father was. His father actually worked in the temple. Uh, Zechariah actually worked in the temple uh, in Jerusalem. And so he came from a prominent family, but he himself didn't follow that path. And so you can imagine someone like that trying to tell you know, influential members of Livingston how to live their lives. They're not going to be listening to him and they're most likely going to be really upset that he is publicly denouncing them. And so I'm pretty sure, I, at least under my interpretation, I'm sure that he had a run in with them multiple times and they probably chased him up and down this river. Uh, so where exactly he did this, I don't know. But for me and for the students and for people who are visiting, it doesn't really matter because it's, it's all the same water. This is the water that Jesus was in. When we read that he came out of the water, this is the same exact water, all right? This water that's flowing up and down this river, Jesus was in it. John the Baptist was here. He stood there. He was baptizing people and he was getting people ready for, for the arrival of Jesus. I also want to address baptism. Now, the baptism that uh, John is doing is both the same and different for the baptisms that we experience now in the modern Christian church. In their understanding, um, one of the things that God expected, and you find this in Deuteronomy and Leviticus in the Old Testament, is that you needed to be clean before you went before God. And of course, you, you can't actually clean yourself entirely. You can only clean your body. Uh, the sin still taints the spirit and still makes you dirty, just as if you went outside and played, you know, touch football and you got all dirty and sweaty. And, um, and so they believed that before you go before God, you need to at least be physically clean because it was his responsibility to spiritually clean you. And so you would bring an offering to temple and, and after you went to the public bath and, and the, the priest would say some prayers over you, you were physically washed. You were physically cleaned. You were ready for that, that judgment. You were ready to go before the Almighty. Uh, kind of like uh, you don't go and play uh, touch football and then immediately go to prom. You know, you play touch football, then you go home and you shower and you shave or, uh, you know, you put your makeup on or whatever it is you do. You get as presentable as you can to go into that environment. Well, it's the same thing or the same thing with like a job interview or, or a presentation. Their idea was that you need to get as clean as you possibly could, as presentable as you possibly could, because you are going before God. 
And while it's still very much a core component of baptism today, we do baptism also as a way to remember what Jesus did. That two things take place in our baptisms. The first thing is that we are getting presentable to go before God. We're having the water sprinkled, we're having our heads dunked, we're having water poured on us, or we're actually physically being dunked into the water and then being pulled back out just like Jesus did. And so that's getting us physically ready to go before God. And the second thing is, because you are choosing baptism, just as Jesus chose baptism, you are choosing to follow in Jesus' footsteps. You are choosing to be an imitation of Jesus, which in effect means that you're accepting his love, you're accepting his grace, all right? And so that in of itself is cleaning your spirit. So now, in the Christian baptism, not only are you physically presentable to go before God, you are also now spiritually clean and presentable to go before God. And that's the whole purpose of baptism. And the reason why Jesus did this is not because he had sinned, not because he was dirty or unclean, but because Jesus lived the perfect life. And as it said, we're going to do this so that all righteousness can be done that God's will is fulfilled, that his law is complete. And we also see this later on in scripture where Jesus says, I didn't come to abolish the law, to get rid of it, to throw it away and start over. I came to be the law, to live it out. I want to show you how it is that we need to live within God's realm. And so even though Jesus was perfect and sinless and didn't need to do baptism, theologically speaking, he did it anyway in order to be perfect, to perfectly obey everything that his father had laid out for all people. Because while this is stuff that was predominantly for Hebrews, John didn't say that. He said, everybody, come here. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Jewish. I don't care if you're Roman, if you're Greek, if you're Palestinian. I don't care. Egyptian, Babylonian, Macedonian, it, it doesn't matter. Come here, come get baptized because God is coming. All right? His wrath, his judgment is coming and you need to be ready to go be before God, to be presented before God. Another reason why that they do this and the reason why John was, was doing this and, and preaching it in the way that he was is that they also believed that you went to court because they were a very legalistic, uh, and they are very much a legalistic uh, culture. They believe that when God showed up, you literally went before a judge. Like God was sitting there, and he had his gavel, he had his long flowing hair like those Englishmen, and the, the big flowy robes. I mean, that's not what they thought of because they didn't have Englishmen back then, but um, just trying to paint a picture for you. But he would have his gavel, and he would look at your rap sheet. He would look at all of your sins and he would go down them one by one. And after he went through all the evidence, he would pass judgment on you. He would give you a sentence. Now, if you lived the right way, you lived according to God's law, then you went to paradise. If you, you didn't, and we see what John says, that he's, he has his winnowing fork in hand. He's ready to start cleaning up his, his barn. He's ready to start pruning, cutting all these dead branches off and throwing them in the fire. He's ready to get rid of all the garbage, all the things that aren't benefiting God. And so you are going to go in a direction you don't want to be in. Not the hell that we understand. Not you know, a devil with a pitchfork and horns and red and all that sort of stuff. No, not going down or going up. Um, it's just total isolation from God, separation from him. Um, and, and, and that separation is so extreme and so painful. The only way we can best describe it is it's as painful as fire. You know, so this is the River Jordan um, where, where Jesus was baptized, where John was doing all the baptisms. And as we continue over, uh, tradition states, now this is not the clothes that people wore when they were getting baptized. I mean, people just wore what they were wearing. But tradition always 
has stated that purity is white. Uh, and you see this in scripture as well, white as snow, white as a lamb. Um, and so when we first arrived, we had to uh, wear these, these white tunics. Uh, now, you could either buy them and they had these uh, really, uh, we didn't like it, but they had these emblems, these really weird archaic emblems on the chest and just really looked really goofy and they were expensive. I think it was like $25 to buy them. Um, just a basically like a bed sheet with a hole cut out of it and arms sewn on. Um, and then this was $10 you had to rent. But this is a, uh, uh, a pool that those who have mobility issues, uh, since the, the river is actually really deep, you can go here and, and still have the full immersion baptism or, you know, they can cup the water and pour it on you as you sit in the pool. I mean, this is ankle deep. As you can see, they're actually standing in the, the actual pool. Uh, and then right behind it is a little bit deeper uh, of a pool. And that is for people who's just a little too short, kind of like Tori here. Uh, because again, like I said, it is really, really deep out past these these uh, guardrails. And so, you know, for some people who are really short, uh, you need to actually stand in the shorter pool. Uh, but these are the college kids, Sam, Tori, Morgan, Ty, and Caleb, who uh, had their, their baptisms reaffirmed. Um, and, and this is really cool because these five right here, them plus a couple other kids, uh, they were the ones who hired me five years ago. And so five years ago, these kids hired this youth pastor and because of our relationship, our brotherhood and sisterhood as, as a community of believers, they wanted to participate in that with me and they wanted to share in that moment with me. And so it was kind of a, a cool full circle type situation. Um, this is me walking out. So also it's incredibly mossy. Uh, this is all just like brick and stone. And so when you first step in, it's super, super slippery. And that's what was happening right here, right when this picture was taken. Uh, I was slipping around because it's just really, really mossy and slippery. And it's also really cold, like I said. Um, so we're not the only ones here. Uh, there are a bunch of people. As I said, I think there's like up to eight pools that they have along the bank. And so they're kind of looking at other people getting baptized and other people were actually getting baptized there, not just doing reaffirmations, but they were actually getting baptized. Um, and then, and, and I made a comment earlier that I'm not ordained, so I can't baptize. What I mean is that within the United Methodist denomination, I do not have the credentials to validate my ability um, or that I have been selected by God to be able to baptize on behalf of the United Methodist Church. So if we run a hypothetical for a, uh, for a situation, let's say, you know, because shortly after this, two days after this was the corona, everything was shutting down, the whole world was like falling apart. Um, let's say that was the apocalypse and we got stuck in Israel. We could never come home ever again. And we actually got stuck on this bank. We had to now live in the wilderness, hunt, fish, gather food. It was the end of the world. Even though I'm not ordained, um, Jesus does give exemptions that, because there's also stipulations within the Old Testament that you need to be priests and they have certain rules, regulations. Anyway, it's all God's law. But Jesus does give exceptions that in certain situations, the body of believers can, in effect, act as ordained priests or act as ordained pastors and, and teachers and all that sort of stuff. So if this was the end of the world, I would have been able to, and they had not been baptized before because United Methodists don't believe in, in rebaptisms. Uh, because it's not the person doing the baptism, it's God baptizing you on uh, through that pastor. So you only need one. Um, but if none of them had been baptized before, it was the end of the world, yes, I could theoretically baptize them. Um, we're at 30 minutes. I need to go ahead and end this. This is just us standing in the pool. Um, I'm kind of explaining some things. I'm actually explaining this very story right here, talking about it. Um, this is a great picture of me. I got a crazy big nose. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm explaining Matthew chapter three, um, which was really, really awesome. And then, so again, you can see on my face, it's really cold, but you can also see how we're standing. We're standing straight up on our tippy toes. The water's really deep. Um, and then I dunk Sam reaffirming his baptism. 
And he comes up and you can see just the pure joy of him connecting with Jesus and connecting with God through the Holy Spirit. Um, but yeah, this is a great picture. It's just awesome. Um, just pure joy. See, I told you it's really, really cold. Um, so again, just re reaffirming it, dunking them, pulling them out. It's awesome. As I said, it was super slippery, so I had to keep holding on to this arm rail because it's deep and I was struggling to pull them back out of the water. And so Ty is really funny because like Ty is standing flat. Okay, I'm on my tippy toes. Ty is standing flat. Look how much taller he is than I am. But as I dunk him, I realize I can't get him back out of the water. So I reach for the pole and then I grab him by a shirt to pull him out of the water. Uh, because I'm just much smaller than him, and it was much more difficult. Um, Tori is too short to go over there, so I had to do it in the shorter pool. And and that's what this is for. It's for people who are just a little shorter, which is totally okay. Um, dunking her. So I didn't warn her it was going to happen, and this is the look that I get. She was totally shocked when I dunked her because she was not prepared for it, <laughs> which was kind of funny. But yeah, it was also really, really cool to see this happening and to be a part of it. And then lastly, Caleb getting uh, getting dunked. Um, again, just pure joy, just total joy with being in the Holy, being in the presence of the Spirit. And um, yeah, this is us just experiencing some some something really really cool. Sorry, getting getting choked up here a little bit. And then this is the whole team, and you can see this is the entire facility all the way up and down here. And yeah, so. Guys, that's, that is the River Jordan. That is the baptism of Jesus, the baptism that John did for many people. Um, I hope that uh, you felt connected to this. I hope that this is encouraging you that the next time we go to Israel, because we will someday go back to Israel, that uh, you'll want to go with us. Hey, do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe button, all right? Tick that bell icon so that you're notified every time we upload a new video, but also every time we go live for Wednesday Night Youth Group if you can't be uh, physically present uh, in holy grounds. Also, can you do us a big favor? Um, this is even bigger than, than subscribing. Can you hit that like button? The more likes that we get, the more it gets pushed out and the more people get to see this. And then lastly, hey, can you tell me how you're doing in the chat? Can you just share with me what you're going through right now and how I can be praying for you? How I can love on you from a distance? Because that's, that's honestly all I care about is continuing to be in this with you and walking you through this. Guys, I love you very much. I do hope to see you this Wednesday for youth group. If not, um, have a great Sunday. And I will see you when I see you. All right, bye.